Greetings friends, and welcome to another Classic Wild video. I am your host Zara, and today I want to talk about Ankiraj 40. It is 10 o'clock in the morning, and this video is supposed to go live in two hours. And, uh, yeah, I didn't have a good night last night. Munchkin was, he's teething now, and, uh, wife had to go in to the hospital to take care of a very sick baby. So I was stuck at home with Munchkin until 1.30 in the morning, and we finally got her to go to bed, and I overslept and was not able to get this video done when I was supposed to. So, hopefully it gets up normal time, but if it doesn't, you know, do understand, please. But, I understand a lot of people, the gates are opening today for Anki Raj, and congratulations. And for me, I've got some footage. I tried recording it. It's, it's not, it's too long. Like, it, 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 it forces me to, you know, drag on too long, and it's just, it's not good. So, I wanted to just kind of just sit here and kind of just talk to you guys one-on-one -on -one about this. And have a conversation about AQ40. So let's just let's just dive right on in and say first of all, AQ40 is a lot of fun. I enjoy it probably more than any other raid. Um, it is long, but it's not long in the sense that the bosses are hard or that such. A, it's just so huge, it's such a, so vast. And the sooner you get your entire raid fitted fitted with you know you know silicon mounts, the better. I would even recommend that your raid go in and clear trash on a regular basis outside of raid night to try and get those mounts the first week. Now, starting with the initial set of pools, you've got the, you know, the Moam looking guys. And these guys are, make sure you just manage these guys. If you're not DPSing or if you're not meleeing, if you're a priest or if you're a warlock or if you're a hunter, make sure you're viper staining, mana draining or mana burning. And we shouldn't have any problems. Wipe those guys up, kill them, they're good to go. With the giant Anubis guys that are walking around, especially the groups of four, right before Prophet Scaring you have two of those pools. You want to make sure that you kill them in a specific order. These guys are going to have various abilities, whether it's a Thunder Stomp, a Thorns, Shadow Volley, whatever it might be. You want to make sure you kill these guys in a specific order. That way you're not dealing with, you know, four guys that all have, or three mobs that all have Thunder Stomp. You don't want to kill Thunder Stomp first. You want to probably kill Thunder Stomp last. Then, of course, Shadow Volley. You don't want to have three of them with Shadow Volley. So make sure that you're killing these guys in a very specific order. That way they have the weaker abilities to go to the four. Because when you kill one, the other remaining ones absorb that ability. So just make sure you kill them in a certain specific order. Make it easy on yourself. You won't have any problems. Hunters, when you're pulling, make sure that you are eyeballing very carefully where mobs are. The aggro radius on these mobs are very, very, very large. So I recommend having a pet with max rank dash at the ready to go in, pull those mobs, and pull them back to you. I'll put up a couple of examples of that here on the screen for you so you can see me doing it. And I'm not by any way flawless, but this is something that I've learned over the last couple of weeks, being, you know, having done AQ40 since week one. It's, uh, it's, it's a very, very easy to overextend yourself and get caught. You don't want to do that. So use your pet, pull this mobs, bring them to you. If your pet dies, no big deal. Revive your pet, feed it, and send it on to the, send us on the way to the next one. There's also several trash packs that are very you have to prioritize certain mobs. Prioritize, for example, stingers instead of wasps. Prioritize those. Karaji slayers over mine flayers. You know, take care of the Karaji slayers first. When you're tranking Karaji slayers, and these are the guys after twin imps and between twin imps and Oro or Cthune. The Karaji Slayers are going to have an end range. You want to make sure your hunters are on top of tranking. You want to make sure that your tanks are separating the mind flares so they don't fear and mind control everybody in the raid. Bring them out, separate them. Same thing with certain pools that include the, you know, the corridors of bugs. It's basically what we like to call, you know, suppression room 2.0. There's not a whole lot to it. You just go until you find a blue a blue bug. Cleave everything down at that point, and then you keep moving. Do not lay a frost trap here. I know it's going to feel tempting to do so, but do not do it because frost trap will linger, and it will allow those mobs behind you when they respawn to aggro, and you don't want to do that. So do not be laying frost traps here. Bad juju. Just go in, knock these out, go up to a blue boy, cleave them down, go up to the next blue boy, cleave it down, rinse and repeat. There's going to be a little corner at the end of that corridor before you get to Fankris where you can sit, you can drink, you don't have to worry about aggro and any bugs, and I'll put a link, I'll put a image of that up here as well okay so on to Fankris. so at this point you're in this corner and you're just kind of chilling your man is back everybody's fully healed Fankris is kind of a disappointing fight i mean he's probably the easiest boss in here and you literally just go in have your tank grab him 
all your melee, DPS, stand to his side or behind him, burn him down, range, get back, blow him up. If you see a serpent, burn it down, and casters and warriors can cleave down the horse warrior, or no, hunters can help out as well with a multi-shot, cleaving down the adds. Otherwise, this fight's very straightforward. This fight's not hard at all. Like I said, he, he dies so quickly, it's not even funny. When we first did this, we were a little sweating it, but, you know, because of the whole issue with people getting teleported back into the corners and stuff, but it was it was not a problem. Just burn down the ads, burn Pancras, and you have no problems. So, easy money there. What else is there? Just things that just stand out in AQ-40. There's also the Battle Guards to Tura fight. There's not really a whole lot you can do. The, mob, the mobs are going to move around. They're going to cleave. There's not much you can do. I believe you can stun lock her adds, but you can't stun lock her. So make sure you're stun locking the rogues and the warriors are stun locking the, her adds. Burn the adds down quickly and then simply just burn her down ASAP. When she cleaves, pull your pet and your melee out. Range continue to do DPS. And just hunters, just keep making sure that you're doing kind of a nice circle around her. Make sure you don't get within range and should have no problems. For other fights, such as with Prophet Scarum, you know, initially, you shouldn't have any problems as a hunter with Arcane Explosion because you should be up on the top platform, DPSing down. But make sure you've got Scattershot at the ready. Also, Rogues, make sure you have Blind on the ready. So that way you can instant cast Crowd Control on the ally that's going to get Mind Control because that's the biggest part about this fight. It's not the Arcane Explosion, it's the Mind Control. Make sure you get an instant cast CC out. That way the mages can get their polys off and don't cleave here because you do not want to A, kill an ally, or B, break them out of any unnecessary CC or break them out of the necessary CC so they don't kill your, your healers or your other melee DPS. So, moving on again, the next boss, which would be the Bug Trio, it's optional. What we did is we're doing the easy version first, so we're taking out Cree, Lord Cree first, then Princess Yaj, and then we're leaving Vim for last. Vim is the one when he dies, he causes the other two bugs to enrage. Also, Princess Yem is the one with the AoE fear, so put her off, or Princess Yaj, put her off to a corner somewhere and have a off tank standing by to pick up threat when she does an AoE fear, because when she does that, it wipes her threat. Have that tank come in, grab her, put her back in that corner, and just keep her out of sight, out of mind. Burn down Lord Cree ASAP, he's got a cleave in front of him, so make sure nobody's in front of him. Leave him down, move on to Princess Yaj, wipe her out, and then leave Vim for last. But what I would do, what we do, is we put Vim, or excuse me, we put Lord Cree in the center. We have two hunters grab uh, Vim and Princess Yaj and run to the opposite sides of the room for their respective tanks. And then, once they're in their position, you have your fourth tank kind of off, standing off out of the way of Princess Yaj, LOS. When she fears, that tank can pick her up, bring her back to the corner, and then the original tank can go LOS and rinse and repeat. Shouldn't be a problem. Easy day. The only thing you really have to worry about is a charge, but as long as everybody is relatively in the same position, you don't really have to worry about it. Moving on again to the next boss, I believe, I believe we've covered Scarum, Bug Trio, we've covered Fancris, and Battles of the Battle Guard Sector, Princess. Princess. Okay, people keep asking about nature resistance. Nature resistance is mostly trivialized in AQ40. The only fight that you need... A nature resistance for is Visitus, and you only need about 160 to 220. Depending if you have 100 in your group, you only need 160 unbuffed, because Aspect of the Law will give you 220, otherwise you need 220. Because anything above 220, I had 315 first week, and I was taking the same amount of damage from the dot ticks as people with 220 nature resistance. So make sure that you have 220 nature resistance. That is the cutoff, that's what you want. So whether it's 220 baseline, or it's 160, and you get 60 from the hunter, however you want to do it, that's the nature resistance you want for Visitus, but we'll touch on Visitus in a minute. Talking about Princess, full DPS gear, out the wall zoo, hunters, stay at range, trank immediately, use the weak ore that is in my Discord I designed down below for that link. Download that weak ore, implement, import it, use it, it'll be beautiful. You will trank ASAP, it's going to be a beautiful thing. You'll still have to manually trank shot, but it's going to give you a beautiful warning. And if you're quick enough, which is very easy, she will not poison volley at all. At all. Once she gets to 30%, everybody blows her DPS cooldowns. She'll be dead before she gets a single volley off during her enrage. I promise you, this fight was so stupid easy. We went from having, you know, 270 plus nature resistance on the hunters and soaking to not soaking at all because she never poisoned volleyed. My hunters were on top of the tranks. She died so quickly that if the hunters put on full DPS gear and assist in that DPS, she'll die even faster. So, yeah, Princess is trivial. Don't worry about it. Stay on top of your tranks and save all your cooldowns for the 30%. Problem solved. 
Moving on to Twin Imps. Now, Twin Imps is kind of a funny one. There's a lot of things that happens here with Twin Imps in the sense that you're going to have situations where you're going to have your Warlocks that are designated to tank on both sides. You're going to have your main tanks on both sides designated to tank. When teleport occurs, make sure that your melee tank, your warrior tank, is soaking that initial teleport threat. Because if you don't, the caster, which is Vecalor, he has been proven to run into melee range of your warlock and kill them. But make sure that your warrior tank is always, always, always soaking the teleport initial threat. And then your warlock can peel off your warrior with searing pain. No problem. Hunters, make sure you're pulling your pets out avoid, to avoid that teleport threat. Pull your pet out when melee runs out. However, I cannot stress this enough. Hunters, make sure you continue to DPS Vecnalosh from range even after melee run out because with the fact that the Twin Emperors share a 2 million health pool, the more damage Hunters can put out in those 5 to 10 seconds that melee are running out and not doing any damage at all can actually mean the world towards the end of this fight. I mean, you can, between three or four hundreds, you can do as much as 100,000 to 150,000 damage over the course of those, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12 teleports that may need to occur. So help yourself out. Continue to do DPS on Vecnalosh just with range. Pull your pet out to avoid the teleport threat. And then whenever the teleport officially happens, then you turn around, you run to the opposite side and do DPS. Also, as a hunter, make sure you keep your head on a swivel because there should be an off tank that's picking up these designated bugs that spawn and enrage. So make sure you kill those bugs very quickly, swap to them, kill them. That way they don't explode and cause massive AoE damage to your casters and your healers and your DPS. The last thing I'm going to want to mention about the Twin Imps is no cleave. Cleaving is a no-no. You don't want to cleave. You don't want to do it because it is proven to be a pain in the butt if you cleave you will hit the neutral bugs which means that you will have an issue where your healers are pulling that thread of those neutral bugs and it's just going to cause them unnecessary knockback on their heels so don't cleave avoid it all possible the only other thing that i might mention i forgot about this is that when your melee goes into Vecnalosh and they swap during a teleport melee please tell your melee to hold off give your give your tank a few global cooldowns to ensure threat to hold threat because it's one thing to get that initial threat from the teleport but it's another thing to maintain threat because when melee go in fury warriors especially can hit hard and fast so give your warrior that extra second because his what his threat's been wiped he's just got the initial teleport threat and sometimes it can bug and vecnalash can teleport his threat to somebody else nearby so give your warrior tank that extra few seconds to get that extra global cooldown or two off then the melee can continuously can just go ham on it and if you do this, you shouldn't have any problems. Just make sure you're avoiding Blizzard as you're going from one side to the other. Avoid it and don't cleave. And if you do see a bug that's in rage, burn it down if you're ranged. Pull your pets out. Pull your melee out inside 7-8 seconds of teleport occurring. Hunters, continue doing DBS on Vecnalosh even after melee runs out. And then swap. Always have your warriors there to soak the initial teleport threat. Warlocks, if it's your turn to, to tank, just pull threat off your warrior with Searing Pain. Or excuse me. Yeah, Searing Pain, and you shouldn't have any problems. And that's Twin Imps in a nutshell. I will say this, uh, kind of a bonus tip. Badge of the Swarm Guard is incredibly useful on Vecnalosh, the physical emperor, because he's immune to Curse of Recklessness and he's immune to Fairy Fire. So the only thing he's going to have is going to be Exposed Armor or Sunder. So that's going to be a perfect opportunity for Hunters to burn Badge of the Swarm Guard on Vecnalosh to get some extra DPS. So that's going to be really, really huge. The last thing that I'll note is that after Twin Imps, this is where the fun really begins. Because that trash pack, after Twin Imps, is a pain in the butt. There's about four or five different variations you can get. Like I said, you've got the Karaji Slayers, you've got the Mind Flayers, and then you've got the Champions. Okay? Now, those three combinations are, can be a pain in the butt. Now, normally, you're going to get either a Karaji Slayer with the Champion, or you're going to get a Mind Flayer with Karaji Slayer. Normally, you only get maybe one pack where you've got all three. So, here's the key thing. Champion, main tank, take him out of the raid, far away from everybody. Mind Flayers, another off tank, take them out of the raid, away from the champion as well. Karaji, Karaji Slayers, those are the ones that the hunters need to mark and have a designated hunter per target mark. If you don't have enough hunters, here's my recommendation. 
mark one with a skull, mark one with an X, and then have the other hunters trank everything else, and then the ones with skull and X you don't have tranks for, burn them down ASAP. Get them down ASAP. That way that they're not in rage and just willy-nilly going throughout the raid, they're being focused down very quickly. The only thing that I want to mention about these trash pulls is be weary, hunters. When you're using your pets here to pull these trash packs, be very, very, very weary about not train pulling, okay? Have your pet with max dash, have your pet ready. As soon as you send your pet in, you tail in, you hot tail in out the opposite direction. Because I promise you this corridor is long, it's deep, it's narrow. Your raid's not going to follow you. you got to pull it into Twin Imp Stream, at least for the first two or three pulls. Because otherwise, it's just going to be too risky for your raid to get out there and get overwhelmed by chain pulling. So, that trash pack is the, is the biggest pain in the butt in this whole raid. It really is. It doesn't really require, you know, anything outside of making sure that the Mind Flayers and the Champions are separated. Burn down the Slayers because they're in rage. And then you focus on the Mind Flayers. Other than that... It's pretty self-explanatory. The key thing is just making sure your off tanks are aware of what they're doing and separating these mobs away from each other. That way the mind control doesn't happen and champions aren't just willy-nilly going around and, and just destroying people. Focus down the Karaji Slayers and you'll have an easy day. When you get towards the end of this corridor, you're going to run into a pack with Anubisus and you're going to have more Moam type dudes. The Moam type guys, you can bring them together, you can cleave them down, but you've got to make sure that you designate mana drainers on both to keep their mana in check. Okay, because now that there's two of them, it's going to be harder to cleave them down and global them like the initial ones, the exterminators or the eradicators in the initial pool when you first stepped into AQ40. Those were just one of those at a time. Now you've got two of them that are similar in effectiveness. So make sure you burn down their mana ASAP, have designated people for each target, and then melee, just burn them down, burn them down, then move on to the Anubisist. Now these Anubisists, these giant Anubis guys, they are similar to your drakes with the cleavers in bwl the giant ones the drake talons the drake talon worm guards i believe their names are these guys are similar in the effect that they're like they're spinny boys sometimes you have a spinny boy sometimes you don't have a spinny boy sometimes all three are spinny boys it can really suck sometimes but it's up to rng when you pull these giant anubis guys at this point in the raid they're going to have a random assortment of abilities whether it's meteor shadow volley flame nova thunderclap whatever You've got to just kind of pick and choose your battles and figure out what its mechanic is and adjust accordingly. Sometimes, like last week, we didn't have a single mechanic. Not a single mechanic occurred. I don't know if it was a bug or if that's how it can happen, but that's why I like to make them, you know, compare them to the Drake Talon Worm Guards of BWL because sometimes you don't have a spinny boy. Sometimes you've got one, sometimes you've got two, sometimes you've got three. You just have to adjust on the fly. But just keep your head on a swivel, burn down the Moam guys, keep their mana low, cleave them down, move on to the Anubis guy, and adapt according to whatever ability they're using. When you get to Oro, Oro is another boss that I want to talk about. There's a mechanic with the Fire Mage you can do here. So the way that this works, Oro is going to do a cleave in front of him. So make sure your tank is turning him away from the raid. Then there is a... Sandblast that does a 90 degree field of view that can be cheesed by having a fire mage apply scorch or excuse me apply ignite and then have all the other mages in your raid spamming scorch to keep ignite up all that ignite threat is going to go to that initial mage that applied it and that mage can soak sandblast and by soak sandblast what i mean is they'll be second on the threat list if you do this right and as soon as Sandblast is fixing to go off, all that mage has to do is turn around, blink out of its range, boom, Sandblast is going to miss, which means that the wipe threat never occurs, and the mage is going to stay stupid high on the threat meter. So as long as your main tank is soaking that initial, that first threat spot, and the mage has the second, Sandblast is always only ever going to hit the mage, and the mage can just blink out of it no problem. The rest of the raid's got the other, you know, 75 degree field of view to attack Oro, wipe him out, and just make sure that everybody uses their rare nature protection pots, because when he does that massive AoE threat wipe and you do the spinnies it does nature damage just soak it with a greater nature protection pot pre-pot and then pot during the fight and you won't have any problems this guy's going to go down super quick the last thing that i want to mention about oro though is that if you're not using the mage strat you've got to be very 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 aware of who is second on the threat list because if you're not then sandblast is just going to obliterate your raid and you have a bad time so and also, don't forget that, you know, he has a chance if you can't kill him fast enough, he'll burrow into the ground. He'll do the, 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 the floaty rock thing. Avoid that. And also, burn down the adds when they spawn, and you'll have an easy time. Just make sure that whenever he gets to his enrage phase, save, again, save your cooldowns for the enrage phase. Because when he enrages, crap hits the fan. People can lose sight of what's going on. They can get a little distracted. 
or get a little overwhelmed, save your cooldown DPS, your DPS cooldowns for that that in rage phase and burn him right down. You want to be problems, especially if you if you have world buffs. Because the first week we did it, we went in there with world buffs on Oro, and we just decimated him. He didn't even get a chance to enrage. We killed him so fast. So just keep that in mind, and you won't have any problems. Now moving on to the final boss, Thune. Like I said, we'll get to this just in a minute. But the final boss of AQ40, final in quotes, is Cthune. I put on my 350 nature resistance gear. I run in. I soak the initial three eye beams. Everybody else runs to their designated corner. I'm sure you've seen it. If you haven't, your raid leaders probably need to talk about this. You're going to have designated eight sets of where your eight groups are going to be kind of surrounding Cthulhu like a clock. I run in. I soak the three eye beams. Everybody comes in behind me, and they get to their initial positions. Everybody stay 10 yards away from each other. Get to your initial positions. Stay 10 yards away from each other to avoid eye beam chaining. And then if you see an if you see a tentacle spawn near you, burn down the tentacle. Otherwise, continue to do DPS on Cthulhu. And then when dark glare occurs, it's going to be that red giant eye beam that goes left or right. You don't have to worry about green eye beam at all. So you don't have to worry about the 10 yard range. Just circle counterclockwise or counterclockwise. Get to your alternative position, which should be the complete 180 position on the map where you were. Get to that position. Stay 10 yards away. Dark glare will end. And then at that point... Problem solved, you can continue doing as you were with the first part of that fight. And then when his eye dies, the Thune will descend, come back up in his true form. And then when this phase occurs, everybody's going to run to the staircase to the far side of the room. When you get to that staircase where the gong is, when you're standing there, the reason you stand here is that it's going to force all the tentacles to spawn in this position. Boom, they'll come up. You'll burn down the tentacles. Once the large tentacle is destroyed, the melee will encase and encircle Cthulhu so that when the regular I-beams spawn there, they can burn those down. Range DPS and tanks. When the giant eye tentacle spawns, burn it down. And then as people begin to get swallowed into his stomach slowly and surely, you start nipping away at the tentacles inside his stomach. Just make sure that while you're inside his stomach, as you're DPSing him, make sure that you are doing the best that you can to not DPS the, the tentacles down to zero, both of them. Like, keep one up a little bit and just keep an ear out for your rage. Like, hey, like, our eyes up, our tentacles up, whatever, because the last thing you want to do is down both sets of tentacles inside his stomach while there's a fresh set of tentacles outside. So make sure that you burn down his, in his, in his, internal, like his internal tentacles right after you burn down his tentacles outside. That way, when the vulnerability phase occurs, you don't have to worry about DPSing other things as well. So go in, stand inside his little teleporter once you've done your part. Healers, top everybody up when you get in. Tanks, immediately run out. DPS, do as much damage as you can without taking too much damage. And then when you start getting a little bit overwhelmed with your dot, then you get out, get sucked up, and you continue as you were previously. Cthune is pretty straightforward. It's not very difficult. I think you'll most of you will have a pretty easy time with it. I was rather disappointed with how Cthulhu went. I mean, this is an old god for crying out loud, and we, you know, we destroyed it the first time, but we one-shotted it. The last boss is Visitus. So everybody wants to know um, what the situation is with Visitus. How much nature resistance do you need, so on and so forth. So I previously mentioned the 160, 220 is the magic number. 160 for hunters and people in hunter groups, because you'll get the 220. People outside of a hunter group get 220. So... When you go into Visitus Room, how we do it, and this actually trivialized it incredibly. By the way, FYI, we basically have everything but a blue post confirming that IC Weapon Enchant does work. IC Weapon Enchant does work on your weapons, no problems, no issues. But we're doing this a little differently. Since we've got a predominantly mage heavy and caster heavy raid, we don't have melee come in at all. Melee stand outside of the fight, that way that the poison volley is controllable. We designate two groups, whether it be three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we break them into groups of two, or sets of two, I guess. And the healers, when the first poison poison volley goes out, they'll cleanse three and four. Groups five, six, seven, eight, you self-cleanse. Use an elixir of poison resistance, use a anti-venom, whether it's regular, powerful, or uh, strong, whichever it is you're using. And then next poison volley, three, four, seven, eight, you self-cleanse. Groups five and six, the healers will cleanse you. This way that the healers are taking far less stress on their mana pool, and they only have to focus on cleansing a certain amount of people. And then when he's frozen from frost wands, frost bolts, and the hunter is using cold rage daggers, then hunters summon your pets, melee will run in, just blow him up, shatter him, and then when the blobs explode, 
explode and they scatter out, go to your designated Cthune corners that you do on Cthune, burn down the blobs in your area. When they get closer, mages, you can, mages can be spamming arcane explosion this whole time. Warlocks can be spamming Hellfire this whole time. And of course, mages towards the end can use Blast Wave when everything's a little bit closer. And of course, all the melee and caster or melee and other casters or healers can blow sapper charges and poof. You should be able to one-shot Visitus pretty easily. But if you don't, no problem. Melee immediately run back out and then rinse and repeat as you were. Start fresh with the cleanses. So it's gonna start with three and four, then five and six, then seven, eight, and then so on and so forth. And then you, if, if you follow this strat, second time, you will shatter him, you will kill him. He will die, you won't have any problems. Um, icy Weapon does work, so you can have Cold Rage Dagger enchanted with Icy Weapon, and also enchanted with Frost Oil, and you will freeze him pretty spectacularly quickly. So just keep that in mind. The only other thing that I will mention is that if you don't feel comfortable doing this because you don't have enough casters, that's fine. Just make sure that you use a similar strat in the sense of, you know, rotating cleanses and also making sure that all your melee, if they're going to be in the entire fight, make sure they have Icy Weapon and Frost Oil because the faster you freeze this guy, the better off it's going to be. Oh, and I almost forgot. Do not, 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 do not use, do not use weapon abilities while trying to freeze him. Only use auto attacks because if you use like Raptor Strike or Wing Clip or Heroic Strike or Sinister Strike, it's going to put a global cooldown on the frost effect on your weapon and it will not proc. So make sure that you're only using white auto attacks against Visitus to freeze him. Once he's frozen, however, then you can go to spamming Wing Clip. Now you can summon your pet and shatter him that much more quickly. So with that being said, um, the only other thing that I would mention is that the... Visitus Poison Volley does not have a limitation, so however many people are in range, you're going to get hit. And Princess, Bear Off Peasant Collar, and other, like, you know, Gnomish Battle Chicken and other trinkets that summon pets and allies, they will not soak the Poison Volley, which there shouldn't be anyway, but they can soak Wavering Sting. So keep that in mind as well. So if that helps your melee, you might want to consider using a Bear Off Peasant Collar or potentially using a Gnomish Battle Chicken. So, hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about. And if not, hit me up in the Discord down below. Link, you follow it there. Join the Discord. Ask me questions. Ping me. Do whatever you need to do. I'd love to answer your questions. Also, be sure to check out the twitch.tv slash SaltyZera. You can check out all my VODs there from the fight with Visitus, the fight with Oro, to show you the melee running out strat and the fire mage uh, ignite strat. And you can also watch the entire Night of Nine AQ40 clay that we did last week and see that. Plus, you can check out the raid tomorrow night. We'll be streaming Wednesday night tomorrow and we'll be doing AQ40 9 of 9 yet again. So, hope to see you guys tonight in the stream, twitch.tv slash saltyzera. I love you guys as always and I'll see you in the next video. And until then, boys, Zera out. <laughs>